So in the last video, we talked a, just a little bit more about working with factors. And that's something we'll continue talking about as we move through the class, but we talked a little bit more about how we play the, with this idea of the underlying levels. In this and the next few of the video lectures, we're going to talk some more about how to work with character strings. And we're going to start just with some simpler stuff that's still useful to know and some reminders of things that we can do, like changing everything to uppercase or lowercase. But then in some of the later video lectures to round out this chapter, we're going to talk some about regular expressions, which are a wonderful, very powerful tool that can let you do a whole lot of stuff uh, with, with data that you have in character strings. So for this next set of slides, we're going to use a different example data set. This is a pretty interesting one. It's data on passengers in the Titanic. And this is actually a pretty famous example that's used for, um, for some machine learning practice and task. So there's a website called Kaggle that lets you do um, these machine learning competitions. So let's see if we can go. So what they what they do is you can have an account there and um, they'll have these different competitions running and they give you a data set and then um, they give you a training one and you're building your model with that and they give you some stuff where you can test on, I believe, but then they, they have some that they reserve and then they check your model against that. And some of them you can see have these cash prizes and they can be a really interesting combination of different things. So we've got some that are with um, the progression of pulmonary fibrosis, um, one with embolism detection and so on. These are just the ones that are up as, as of um, October of 2020. But then there's one that's been out kind of since the beginning, and it's data on uh, the Titanic. So it's got a row for each passenger, and then it's got information about that passenger and also whether the passenger survived or died. So we're going to use that as an example here because it's got some interesting features for how you might want to pull out stuff from character strings. So that's in a package in R called the Titanic package. So make sure you install that if you don't have it already. And then if you want to follow along with this code, you'll want to make sure that you have the Tinyverse package loaded. Again, that's kind of a wrapper package that will load things like dplyr and forcats and a package that we're going to use today called stringr that's good for string manipulation. Then you'll want to load the Titanic data set and then also load the specific data. So in this case, it's called Titanic Train. It's not every single passenger. It's only a portion of them. And this is the data set that, that you're given to kind of like train and build your model. And then there's a holdout testing data set you can use to test. Um, so if we take a look at that, let's do head Titanic Train. Um, each of these rows is a passenger. So you can see, for example, this first one is Mr. Owen Harris Brond. And then it's got some information, like a unique ID for each passenger, whether they died or survived. And this is coded as a zero or one, where I believe one is that they survived. But we could check actually the help file to check on that. All right. Well, I'm not sure that's completely helpful. That's saying that it is the survival indicator. Um, the other things that it has are the class. So were they first class, second class, third class, whether they were male or female, the age. I believe these next pieces are some information talking about whether they travel with their family. Um, some information about their ticket and the fare that was paid, their cabin, and where they embarked. So I think there were two or three different places where people could have gotten on the boat. So that's giving that information. So the idea with this, with this um, specific competition was to see if you could take all of these different variables and try to predict the likelihood that they survived or did not survive the, the, um, when the ship sank. So in this case, there is one column that might be particularly interesting that's a character string. That's the name. We've got some information embedded there where we've got the name itself, but we've also got things like their title. So we've got Mr., Mrs., Miss. So at, at this time period, that would imply somebody who was female and not yet married. Um, I believe they've got master for, for boys that were younger than a certain age, and so on. So that's something where we might want to pull out elements from, 
these character strings. We'll be using in this lecture and in some of the, the following lectures for this chapter, a package called Stringer. So you can install and load that individually if you want, but you can also just do the library tidyverse, and this is one of the packages included in that. So I was just mentioning that we have this one name column that we want to work with a lot. And so um, not too much in the rest of this video, but especially in later videos, we'll look a lot more closely at that. So let's start by talking about some simpler things that we can do with the stringer package to work with these character strings. The first is trimming and padding them. So every now and then we'll read in data where it will have these extra white spaces. So we call those leading if they come before and we call them trailing if they come after. But in that case, when you print out, when it prints with quotations, you'll kind of see that space around. A lot of times we want to get rid of that. A lot of times that's something that's just kind of a relic of how the data came in. So let's set that up and we'll call this with spaces and we'll just do a vector for right now. But we can do a few spaces and then a letter and now we can do like one space and gamma and a few after and then maybe let's do beta just with one after. So when we print that out, you can see the spaces. But then if we want to get rid of those, we can use the string trim from the stringer package. So in this case, uh, we could, if we wanted to, pipe it in. So str trim. And all this is going to do is chop off any of the spaces that come before or come after other content. You can see now that it's it's gotten rid of all those extra spaces. So now it, it's very tight around the character itself. Now, if we had something where we had um, two words, it's not going to trim out the space in between. It'll only trim out the space that's kind of on either side. So you can see it's kept the space in between the words. Now, sometimes what we'll want to do is we'll want to actually add a little bit of padding consistently. Um, so, we could start with something with no spaces. And in this case, I'll just do a few letters. So we could do A, B, and C. So right now, you can check and see that has no spaces. But if we wanted to add some of this padding, we can do string pad. And in that case, we need to say how wide we want it to be, what we want it to pad with, and then which sides we want things to go on. So let's say that we wanted to add a blank space after each of these. We've already put the string in because we're piping that in. That's the new spaces. We can say that the width that we want is one. The side in the, that case, we want to add it to the right hand side. And then the pad that we want to use is just a blank space. So when we run that, oh. <laughs> Oh, I did the wrong width. Let me make sure I do too. There we go. All right, so now it's added that extra space on this side. One time when this shows up a lot is when you have some different identifiers that um, are using numbers, but really in kind of the sense of a character, the sense of an ID. And sometimes um, you want to have zeros at the start of those. And if you bring in your data and it's read as numeric, those get lost. So one example is we have these things called FIPS codes, F-I-P-S. Those are county identifiers, and um, they've got two values for the state and three values for the county. But a lot of times when you read them in, if there's a leading zero on those, they get trimmed off. So you might have something that looks like that. And then you might have some other ones that look kind of like that. And so what you really want here, in this case, maybe it was maybe it was even bringing it in as numeric. We don't even have it as this yet. But what you want is for any of these that are shorter than five digits to get a zero added onto the beginning. So in that case, we could take the no spaces. And in this case, we want the full width to be five. So we want to add padding if it's not five wide already. That means that for this one, which was already five digits wide, it's not going to do anything but change it into a character. But for this one, it's only four digits. And so it is going to pad it. 
In this case, we might want to pad to the left and for the pad to be zero. So when we run through, you can see that it added a zero at the beginning for the thing that was a little bit shorter. It padded that with a zero. Uh, the next thing that we can do with stringer functions is pretty straightforward. We have actually already looked at, although it was a very small example when we were working through some of the stuff in the first few chapters. That is that we can take one of the, the character strings and we can change everything to upper, everything to lower, everything to what's called title case. So let's take a look at that with the Titanic data. As a reminder, here's what the beginning of that looks like. So we have this character string right here where we have name. If we want, we can add a mutate and we can do name equals string to upper of that column. Now when we run that, you can see that every letter has been converted to uppercase. On the other hand, if we wanted everything in lowercase, we can do string to lower, and now everything you can see is in lowercase. The final thing that we can do that's useful sometimes is we can do what's called string to title. This isn't going to look very different from the original because what it actually does is it does the first letter of each is a capital letter and then everything else it puts in lowercase. So the, the first letter here for Brand is capital and the first letter here is capital and so on, but then all the other letters or lowercase.